what is up you guys welcome to our ascend with me series today we're gonna go over genesis 1 and all the little notes that i put so you guys can study with me and i want to say i'm sorry for being gone for like a month i was going through my grandpa's funeral and that dealing with all of that um and then i got sick right after that <laughs> and then i just needed like last week to really recuperate and bring myself back together so now we are back again but i told you i wasn't leaving for that long again i barely finished a, like re reading genesis 1 and writing more notes uh yes two days ago and so, so now i'm recording this video today so yeah so sorry for me looking crazy too i did not feel like being cute today so if you're interested in studying with me and ascending with me on my journey then i would really love if you Stay and watch this video. And if you are new here, my name is Smiley. And welcome to my life. Okay, so we're actually going to read the verses. It's not going to take too long to read the verses. It's 31 verses, um, and we're only going to go over the parts that I actually made notes from. I have notes in my journal that I've put, I made since October of 2023, and then these are the notes that I made, like, a few days ago. I started this, like, a few weeks ago, but I finished it a few, like, two, couple days ago on Monday. Um, but yes, so we're going to read it. I'm going to put it on the screen so you guys can read with me. Um, the Bible that I always use is the New International Version from Study Bible from, um, Zondervan. So that's what we're going to read. Um, so starting with verse one, chapter one of Genesis, that's where I have my first note. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay. Like, y'all just like, okay. It, but I already have notes to put just on that one verse. So from my notes that I put for the verse one, I've said, the Bible shows us that in the beginning, God was there to create. But um, God was there to create. But this is just, but it's, it's just the beginning of the three D. The name God renders the common Hebrew name Elohim, which is usually plural. Um, see, there's always proof of more gods, but it is referenced to speak of the one true God. So let's break that down a little bit more. So God is a spiritual being. So part of me and my intuition is telling me this isn't just him creating life everywhere this was the beginning of the 3d because in the next verse it was just talking about how the earth was formless but i definitely believe in there being deities and beings before the earth was formed right so and like i said in the original hebrew which is what we're trying to assume me and get to the truth the, in the original Hebrew, the name God is usually Elohim in the original text of the Hebrew text. And Elohim usually means plural for God, which again references to there being the possibility of other deities, Arisha and Yunaki, all of that, that is contradicted later in the Bible. We know the Bible has plenty of contradictions. This is the one of the few times it's spoken of the being multiple heavens. And I feel like this may be a way of saying there were already deities. He said, let there be light after there was already a heaven, which to me implies darkness in the heavens. He was not satisfied until he saw that the light, that the light was good. 
Oh, I'm smart. Sometimes I'll be reading my own notes and I'm like, hey, I don't, I'm not even thinking about that right now. Like, I, I got that. He really didn't say let that be like, he created the heavens and the earth without creating light, which some people, which light can be life, right? So what was in the heavens and the earth? He just created the paths of gold, the streets of gold. He didn't create plants yet in earth. So what did he do when he was creating? I believe, I really do believe this is when he created other deeds for real. So now we're going to go to verse two, which speaks of, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. We're going to take apart that one, too. So, for that second verse, what I put in my notes I made a few days ago, or finished a few days ago, is the earth being formless and empty may be a hint to an age and time frame this takes place in. Because <clears throat> if you guys remember in the previous to sing with me video watch that before you watch this one you gotta stay on track so because i don't like to repeat so much um day and night can just mean time of age like it doesn't actually mean it has to be a day of the sun because he wasn't even creating day you know what i'm saying so this was uh how the earth was formed and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep it could mean because deities are not perfect and a lot of myths if you look at the stories myths if you look at the stories there's a lot of like fights and everything nobody nobody no deity no angel no thing is perfect except for god okay never believe anything is perfect nobody nowhere in the bible does it say they're perfect people will say they're perfect but God never says they're perfect. I don't even know if he calls himself perfect. We're going to see. Something about what I said feels a little wrong. But we're going to see. Because we're going to keep reading the Bible. Right? Okay. So I feel like there was darkness in those deeds. In that time frame when it was just angels. And you see what I'm saying? And this reminds you. This is around the time. This has to be around the time where Satan was cast out of heaven or Lucifer was cast out of heaven. Satan can be multiple devils or demons. Lucifer it speaks of Lucifer. Okay. When Lucifer was casted from heaven, this could be the darkness that he was talking about as well. Or it could be the obvious, okay, it was dark because he didn't put no light, like literal light. So now we're going to read through verse three to five and i'm going to give you my notes on that so verse three says and god said let there be light and there was light <laughs> i'll just say that like that because it's just a big thing that everybody says let there be light. it's like I, I feel like the power when i say that so there was light. god saw the light that the light was good and I can't read. God saw the light and the light was good and he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Okay. So let's unpack that a little bit more. So I said, so in my journal that I wrote from October 23rd, 2023, I wrote a note for one through five, and I wrote a side note. So the note that I wrote for the one through five is, God is always presented as light, but if he is everything, he must be darkness as well. There must have been a way for Satan to have darkness if he is unable to create. Because that's what it says in the Bible, that he's unable to create. If God is light, when he said, let there be light, was he sharing the light with the universe? Which is kind of obvious to me now, like, yeah, he was. Okay, but anyways, um, God saw the light and that it was good, and he separated it from the darkness. This is probably where 
good is light and dark is bad comes from um is light and darkness meant to be separated or just studied individually well he obviously separated so it's meant to be separated so ignore that um i was like there must be times in the bible when day is a metaphor for good and vice versa for night and then the side note that i put is why is god telling something or someone to do it who is he talking to god don't need to talk to himself he could have just did it what is he saying let there be light for right um so i think that's like a way of moses who's known to believe who's believed to write the first the mosaic law the first books the first five books of the bible it's letting us know that there's something more going on there and we have to touch with God, with God. Cause I really feel like there's hidden things in the Bible that people, that a lot of people who wrote the Bible, like the original people knew that people wouldn't be able to comprehend or they would take it to another level or they just wanted them to like have their own experience with God to learn and grow because when you understand certain things it makes like your mind explode so i really feel like certain things just meant for us to figure out you know or is god like ashe i don't need to look at what an ashe is or is god like Oludumare, an actual fellow orisha oh an actual or the actual supreme being telling his sons and daughters to um or the other research to get things done. You gotta look up the. I wrote that down because I was I learned the creation of the world through the stories of the Orisha story. You gotta look up the origins of the world from different um, beliefs and myths, and then you'll understand why I wrote that. Anyways, so why don't people think? about who he was talking to when God's saying and things like that there be like let there be this and animals and all that. Um he must have been talking to a deity with powers to do the unthinkable. Um like the Arisha, the Anunnaki, aliens, angels. So they because he was telling them what to do. He's like let there be this. Right. Okay. So that was the one to five from the October. And then let's go to the three to five notes that I wrote from a few days ago. And that is when he separated light from darkness is uh, is when he could have separated good from bad. There has obviously had to be something going on in the divine realm with the deities that it had to be separated. Because he didn't separate it at first, so. But he barely made light, right? But anyways, then I also put, this could also speak of the first time God did a huge shift in the universe. A huge cleanse. Because he could have just removed the darkness from, like, the spring of angels and put them somewhere. And he left heaven just to be a light and then hell dark. This could have been the hugest, because you got to remember Satan had a third of the angels, right? A third, and they call it angels. That's what it's known to say. But it really could have just been deities. A lot of people consider people angels. If you go back to my um, my video where I said, did, did I see the spiritual warfare? That's in my spiritual encounters playlist. Um, so if you go to my channel, go to play this for the spiritual accounting. It will say, Do you see the spiritual warfare? You'll see in that video, I speak of how after I seen the bright light, I seen this girl, or I don't even know if it was a girl, it was just a being, right? Well, I, yeah, no, I think I knew it was a girl, <laughs> it was some years ago, but um, and then I was like, Are you an angel? and she said, I have, and then the being said, I have many names, blah blah blah. So even angels don't always 
consider themselves angels. So it could have just been beings or deities or I don't know, goddess. I, 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 those beings could have need, obviously needed a cleanse or something because in the next chapter is when Adam and Eve are brought forth, which is when Lucifer is brought forth. So this must have been, so this is before Adam and Eve. So this must have been when all that was happening. Like y'all gotta pay attention. Like this is speaking of deeper things here that things that we know and things that we don't know and don't understand. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was cleansing the world when he was making light. When he made heavens, he had to make something to go into heaven. You understand? He had to make the but people think I need to go to church though. But church just don't even understand that. They read it just like for a word, for his verse, and it's gone. Oh, he created like he created like. This is why we're here to sing. Anyways, so um he also separated the light from darkness instead of removing the existence of darkness. So this is the first time. So this is the first form of duality which means they're needing a balance between light and darkness. Because he could have just removed the whole... They say yin and yang is evil and duality is evil. But if if that was true, in the first verses of Genesis, it wouldn't show the need of duality. Why would he separate darkness and light if there was no need for darkness? If there was no balance that was needed. You know, like, I'm trying to do the yin single, single symbol. There is a need to have both. Okay. But in this world, the darkness is overpowering the light. And that's why God is going to have to make big shift to show the good. There's a need for both. Y'all need to watch supernatural shows. You don't understand why there's a need for everything not to be good. And why there's not, of course, if everything to be bad, it's not good. That's then what I wrote a few days ago, a couple days ago was, Light is also necessary for making God's words more visible and life possible spiritually and physically. So that's actually, I should rearrange the say Dark is also necessary for making God's work more visible. Because if everything was good and great, y'all would understand the power of God. There's, been, there's plenty of times in the Bible that God waits to the last minute or he does certain things in a certain way to show his work and his glory and who he is to remind everybody. Don't, I, I've been raised to not question God, but that's how it works when you're talking about it. So the next thing we're going to read is the verses 6 to 10. So, and God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made that vault. He made the vault and separated the water from underneath from the water above it, he made a vault. So he made like a space in between and he separated the water because it was just a whole bunch of water. He made a vault, he made some space in between and now there's water above it and below, okay. And it was so, God said, let the vault, God called the vault sky. That was the vault above, the water above. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water underneath the sky be gathered into one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called sea. And God saw that it was good. I think I put it in this notes, but I kind of remember me thinking about this. So since everything was created through water, he made, he made land through water. That's probably why it was so easy for God to flood the world in the story of Noah. Um, maybe he just removed the vault in the middle and he was like, all right, let's flood it over. So the note I wrote from October for this is God made the land and the seas and God saw that it was good. Does it mean good to eat? Good for what? spiritually good what because this is because we don't know when he had he they when they when god had the plan of making human beings 
Like, was it always a plan? There's no such thing as time. So that's a little confusing in here. So the next verses I'm going to read is 11 through 14. So that reads as follows. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on that land um, that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate day from night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. So the main point I have from that is, of course, verse 14. Because let's read that one more time. We're going to go read verse 14 one more time. And I'm going to slow it down a little bit because we really need to impact. And we really need to think about that message. And I'm going to keep going back to it for the next verses too okay and god said let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred time and days in year chinese calendar just came in my head when i was thinking about that um, and one thing I forgot to do is the Lord's Prayer that I wanted to start this video off with. So I'm super late. I'm like in the middle of the video and I'm about to do the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> because it's funny how I remember to do that right now, though. Isn't that hilarious? Um, so the Lord's Prayer, I like the Matthew version more, better. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors and lead us not into t temptation but deliver us from the evil one and king james it says deliver us from evil and they have like another verse that's added to it that's taken out of this one which i kind of like and it says for thine is the kingdom and glory I forgot the last part but it's like another word so it means for that is for God so now that we prayed we're gonna go I'm gonna read this verse again one more time <clears throat> and God said let there be light to the vault of the sky separate the day from night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years and what I wrote down And what I wrote down is still confused on what these lights were because stars, I, this is because I read the notes, that's why I said still confused. Because stars have not been created yet, but it shows that God put certain elements on earth to help separate day and night, which could also be good and evil. Because that's when he realized he needed to do that because Lucifer betrayed him, right? Um... He knew we would. He knew we would need help with this. We, we would need help to know the difference between day and night. So he marked, gave signs and sacred signs and lights in the sky. And again, that also can be when he created other deities because he put lights in the sky. But he this is before he made stars. Right after this, he made stars. But he didn't make stars this way, right? So what lights? What's he put in the sky? Because he didn't even make the sun and moon yet. We, we got to pay attention, y'all. We got to pay attention. Some things are not meant for it to just be read through so fast. So now we're going to read 15, verse 15 to verse 19. And that reads as... And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. So already there you can see those lights that wasn't starting to get. To give light to earth. To help earth to give 
peace and goodness to earth. The deities are, that sounds like angels to me. He created lights, beings of light in the sky to help bring light to the earth. Okay. So verse 16 starts with, God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. Now he made stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and night, and to separate it, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. Okay, let's unpack this. I can't believe this video is already at 30 minutes. So first, I'm going to go over my October notes that I wrote for verses 11 through 19. And that is as follows. It says, God made food, but were we a thought by now? On verse 11, he made plants. But if there was no beings, there was no human beings on earth, what, what are you making plants for? The uh, the beings that are not perfect so they get hungry. And why he made hunger, though. We had a hunger for a reason. Y'all ain't ready for this conversation. Y'all not ready for this conversation. So let's restart over again. God made food. Well... Were we a thought, or if not, who was the vegetation for us when he made it? Was he, uh, was it for ones for, was it for the ones he is saying, let there be light food? When let there be this food? Is this when you, is this why you have offerings for deities? They always use fruit and herbs because they were people. Um, they were originally for, because they were the people that they were originally for. Is that why? Oh, I'm smart as hell. <laughs> so I'm saying, uh, like, I did a lot of research on different things. And a lot of deities, like, you give them fruit, like, the same way God, uh, Canaan gave offerings. To God and Abel and all of them. What is up, you guys? I am embarrassed to say this, but it's been a week and uh, so I was recording that like what Monday and no, or like Sunday. I don't even know. And it's like a week later on a Tuesday. So uh, yeah. I gotta get myself together, y'all. I gotta get myself together, but don't love this video for trying to still make it and still read and still be on this path. Love. All right. All right. So before we get back into this, I do want to go back into um, the same prayer again. I have a lot going on right now. I got laundry in the, in the washer and dryer. I'm trying to hurry up before I go to work. Not super hurry up because I want to get the message clear. Um, but I want to hurry up a little bit so I can have some time to edit it before I go to work. So I can just like finish it either at work. Probably at work because I'm a boss saying every day. And then I can upload it at, at work. Y'all got this video today. If not, y'all got this video tomorrow. But either way, you're going to have this video between today and tomorrow. And I'm going to try. I'm going to try to upload Genesis 2 on Sunday. It depends on when I finish the notes. But anyways, so we were reading chapters. I I, read, I looked at the end of my last video and I believe we're in the end. We're, I'm now I'm reading my note from 11 to 19. So I was, we're starting to speak about offerings and stuff. But I just want to pray again using the Lord's Prayer so that way we're on the right track. Um, yeah, get my messages correctly. Okay. So, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread every time i start speaking the lord's prayer like a chills comes over my body like a piece um the chills and a piece of two different things but that's what i'm 
But anyways, give it, so I'm going to read it over again. I'm going to say that. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we are also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. So at the end of my video, I was talking about the Canaanites and how Canaan Abel, how God took one offering, didn't take the other offering, which is going to get more into Genesis 2, so I don't want to get into that too much. Um, but I was wondering if this is how offerings are, is this how the beginning of having fruits and flowers and stuff for deities has started? Because remember, God know the difference between Lord God and when it says the Lord. And we're going to get into more of that because it's not talking about the Lord or Lord God too much in Genesis 1, but it starts to talk about that more. Genesis 2, I believe. So, I just am like, is this where it came from? Because why do we have, why is he making fruits and vegetables, but he's not even making mankind yet, right? So it must have been for deity. So they must have needed fruits and vegetables or whoever was around before he made Adam. And Adam means man. Okay, so, and then what I also wrote in my notes, uh, I said, is this why Lucifer and his teammates, <laughs> his teammates, <laughs> I can't cross that up, got offended and felt disrespected by God. Because he was catering to the other deities. People say it was for humans that he got mad at. But if Adam and Eve were the only humans and he deceived Eve so easily, why was he mad at humans? What he was mad at the two humans that was here? I don't think so. I don't think so. He just decided to terrorize anything, any other deity because he wanted the angel or him himself to be highest because he was the favoritism until he made other deities that can feel and be away from God. He was just jealous. And now he just taking over the world. Do y'all see the way the world's going? I gotta keep going before this space runs out, honey. So was he dis Oh, that's smart. I said he felt dis was he disrespect was he feeling disrespected by the one who created them being a creator because the other deities, if you do your research again and you're not here to reach all of them, even the uh Shemaic Shemaic believes like they have other deities that created a lot of stuff in the world like they have a main deity that creates the general world and they have stuff like oh so it governs the water made people made love like there's even in north there's like different stuff like that so was he offended by the other deities being a creator you know what i'm saying by the creator the one who created them being a creator but anyways, uh, I put, what is the law, the light in the vault of the sky that used to separate day and night and in, in signs to mark sacred times, days and years and give lights on the earth? He later made stars, so this must be a metaphor for something else. Um, it may be when he made good and evil and some things to guide us. Um, and... Back then, that I was read. I know I was in this journal when I was on my balcony, and I said that's like when I said that, like type of fairies came to mind, and I don't know why I came to mind when I I was thinking about that. Like, of course, fairies are supposed to be here to guide us, but I still don't know one hundred percent what I believe in fairies. Like, I think they exist. There could be good and bad. How much they're supposed to be involved into our life, I don't know. Um, but whatever it is, since it's separated good and bad and used for sacred stuff, it shows that there are good and bad and stuff that you can do, um, to have signs and help connect with the light, whatever that is, and for, oh, it could be power and different deities and stuff like that, 
Maybe this is when he made supernatural realms and guides. Okay, so that's what I made for that note. Oh, it's still going. Okay, he made the great, the greater light for the day, the lesser light for the night. Um, the sun is stronger than the moon, but they are both. The moon and stars, but they are both strong. Um, he also used them to govern the day and govern the night and give light on the earth, which is like using the moon. Sorry, my alarm is going off. Using the moon for the moon and the sun for protection because he used them to govern the day and the night, the stars, right? Um, and to separate light and darkness. So clearly, he was not trying to keep light and darkness together. But he didn't destroy darkness either. So again, duality. Alright, we're getting close to the ending, guys. So, the next verses we are going to read is verses 20 to 23. And that reads as, And God said, Let the water teem with the living creature, and let the birds fly above the earth, across the vaults of the sky, so God created the creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it, according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth and there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. Okay, so let's see what I wrote about that. Because I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> so my October note is, God wanted the water to teem with the living creatures. Is this when he made murder? There's a lot of mythical stuff that actually has proof in the bible that it could actually exist i do believe memories exist um again good and bad good and evil ones like there's good and evil and all things light and darkness and all things <laughs> um there's so many people who've seen mermaids and i feel like i've seen them myself when i was in the ocean when i was younger and i was in florida anyway so he also made birds in this verse um, he created great creatures of the sea and everything in the water. God made animals before humans, so that's so. Is that why, like, they're already like advanced spiritually and they, um, and they were God? God, like God, like like how do you know Beset? But I think Beset is the name for like the cat, Egyptian god. That's a cat, goddess. That's a cat. And after God said that they were good and blessed them, um, He wouldn't bring a creation, or He brought blessings in your life until until you were good, and then gave them fertility to multiply. So He makes sure you're all good inside. So people who are struggling with fertility and problems and even though they believe in god like god can but like my sister oh my gosh my sister is the living proof of what i just said about you being good and he gives you the blessings of fertility and multiplying because my sister i don't want to put all her business out there but she never wanted kids she was always against it and the more closer she got with god and everything she found her husband her her kingdom husband and he wanted a kid and my mom's sister was having like issues in her body she was more on the path with God, found her kingdom husband, and and then after her kingdom husband wanted the guy, wanted a kid, she wanted a kid. Boom. No matter what problems she was having in her body, no matter what happened, did she have my nephew? My nephew is healthy today. Hey, God bless my sister. Man. <laughs> I love my nephew. Um, he's only he was born February fifth, and this is uh July twenty third. So he's almost six months, right? February, March, February, June, so yeah, he's almost six months. <laughs> I love my baby, but I was just like, no, you're gonna have kids, and she never wanted it. And all of a sudden, she got pregnant, which she wanted. So we're on the right state of mind. Woo! God is good. God is good. God is good. 
Anyway, so yeah, so that was what I said for that one. So let's go to my notes that I made like a week or two, two weeks ago. And what I put for that note is God created great creatures. God created great creatures of the sea. And and in Canaanite Canaanite mythology, this is used to name the Leviathan, which is what Archangel Michael kills in the end days, and that's what defeats evil in the world, basically. Right? So, and that's I don't know if the Archangel Michael part is from the Canaanite mythology, but the Leviathan is from Canaanite mythology. And then Leviathan was a dreaded sea monster who is referred to being one of God's most powerful opponents. And it, Satan is also referred to uh, the Leviathan as well because he's referred as a snake, a reptile. And then Leviathan is basically a big snake in the ocean. So he's, he's the defeats him in the end. And I believe it's that as being like a metaphor to like what's going on. Like, look what's going on in the music industry and all this demonic stuff that's going on. And I do believe the angels and the good would defeat them. With our help, of course. <laughs> okay. Hey, there's only two more sections I need to do notes on. And I just finished my breakfast. <laughs> Not eating it, but I just finished making it. So this is turning out with perfect timing. I'm um, so glad I could finish this video at home and I don't have to rush the ending. I'm so happy I'm going to post this video. It's been like a month and a week or two since I posted in the Sin Me series. And like I said, I was going to my grandpa's funeral. I was going through sick. I literally got sick and all that. So it shouldn't be another month since I posted this video. It's definitely not going to be another month because I'm starting the Genesis 2 right now. But uh, it, the, the problem, I'm not even going to get into that today. I already discussed that in the beginning, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I'll try to keep you updated. Please look at my um, community tab because they now they used to make community tabs only for people who had like a lot of followers, but now they make it where everybody can post. So, because if I'm if I'm on track with posting and I'm gonna miss a week or something, then I'm gonna post on my community tab that I'm missing that week and what what I'm missing that week for most of the time. So if you're like, hey, where's the video at? Here it goes, and this video is getting posted. Not on Sunday because I need to post a video. It's been too long since I posted a video. And then I'm going to try my best to post Genesis 2 on Sunday. It depends on if I finish my notes and if I finish recording it. And then I got to finish editing it. Editing is the thing that takes the most time to upload these videos. Reading takes time. Recording takes the least amount of time. But editing takes the most. If editing takes the most amount of time, top tier and then reading takes a second and most amount of time and then recording takes the least amount of time anyways i just have to record in a decent time because i don't like to record when i'm not in, when i'm in a negative mood because i'm gonna just give that energy out to the world and i don't want to do that i want to record when it's like this where it's something that I, ain't nobody home and making noises and bothering me and making it awkward and it's a decent time of day, so there's a natural lighting and stuff, even though I got other lights on. So you guys can see me, you guys can hear me, and I have enough space on my phone because I have to make sure I can record the whole thing through. Like, I had a, the last one thing I talked to you from the last video, too, is because I had to upload, like, into Google Photos so I can have more space on my phone. So I'm going to keep going because it stops me at 30 minutes, and I'm pretty sure it might stop me at 30 minutes now, and I'm at 17. So, anyways. So we're going to read, the next verses we're going to read is going to be from 24 to 27. And that reads as follows. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. The livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to, the, to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals, animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all of the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and over all the wild animals and all over all the creatures along the ground. God created mankind in his own image, and in the image of God, he created them. 
male and female he created them okay so the october notes that i have for verse 24 to 27 is that god made land creatures of their livestock so then god made land creatures in their livestock god made mankind in in their whatever their is image um I was like, Arisha? Because he said, um, let's read that part over again. Let us make mankind in our image and in our likeness, so they may rule over the da-da-da-da. And God made mankind in his own image, and in the image of God he created them. There would be no reason to do two, because in this Bible it says, don't, uh, it's the same thing, don't think too much of it, it's having the, uh, Man, how, say mankind in our image and mankind in our likeness don't separate those two and don't separate uh so god made mankind in his own image and in, in his image god created them and in the image of god he created them but the, they wouldn't have put that twice not only did they put those two things they put it twice two times if it was for no reason like why would i just ignore that you know what i'm saying so um there's a reason why he did it like that. So I'm thinking, so what I've been thinking about is in our image, it's more just our form and how we, our physical form. And in our likeness is more of a spiritual form. And that's why people are not always wrong when they say that you can be a God yourself because we have God inside of us. So how are we not God? If God is our father. And what if we know anything about genealogy? We, we have to get the genes from our father. So how can we not be God? But we're not the highest power. That's blasphemy. I feel like I hear like Jews in my head saying blasphemy. But we all have power inside of us. Not all of it. I don't think all of us can unlock it. Well, and that's why people are very powerful evil people right um so anyways back to my notes i said he wrote he made us to roll over i'm gonna read that verse again he made us to roll over the fish of the sea the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the wild animals over the creatures that move along the ground but he said the fish in the sea he said of all the creatures in the sea so that's how you know we're not supposed to eat everything or we're not supposed to roll over everything. He, get, he limited us to everything as well. And it said he made mankind. So this is before he even made Adam. Are y'all tracking with me? Adam is not first. It clearly says it just like that. Anyways. Um, over life, sorry. And so, since he made us govern over livestock and gardening and stuff like that, that's probably why fairies, this, this, I put that, that's probably why fairies help us because it's what we're supposed to do. And then we annoy other people in other realms. That's probably why other realms and deities and beings hate us because we over here trying to roll over stuff that ain't even been gifted to us. We're not doing stuff we're not supposed to do. That is not what human beings are not to do. Do the one stuff we ain't supposed to do. Um. I was like, that's low-key disrespectful. We're really stuff we're not supposed to do. Um, and made and that's when he made men and women. Cause they made mankind. So that's when he just made a man I made a woman. But I don't know. I'm so iffy about that. So anyway, so that was that oh. And then let me read my notes from what I made. That was not long ago. So I said, God created great creatures of the sea. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> so this one says, God made mankind in our image. Who is our? Is the angels, deities. And in our likeness, it feels like it speaks the power of spiritual gifts, of lights, of intuition. Uh, we were meant to rule over the of light and darkness because that was already created. We were meant to roll over the fish in the sea, not the whole sea, birds of the sky, lights of wild animals. Um, Abel was shepherd. Um, and I feel like shepherds are often favored in the Bible. And I was funny because I was just watching The Chosen after I wrote this, like yesterday. 
And then I was watching it for the last two days. But I think yesterday, the day before, is when I was watching the party of the chosen, where Jesus says he was speaking to a crowd of people, and there's a Pharisee there, and he was saying, um, and that's when the people, like the two people from John the Baptist council came and told him that John was like, when are you gonna be doing what you're supposed to be doing? Um, but anyway, so God was speaking to one of the people there, and he was saying he favors shepherds and the work that they do. And how when one sheep goes astray, you you go and find that one valuable sheep and care about the other ones. And that's what he said, the kingdom of heaven and how God is like, like he's going to favor that one person, take care of that one person more than all the other ones that goes astray. So anyways, that that's a powerful message in its own self and message for another day. We'll get to that when we get to that part of the Bible. Um, so I was like, David, who is the one who uh, slayed Goliath, he was a shepherd first. Abel, which is the second son that was born, he was a shepherd. Joshua was a shepherd. So, and they all were the men, one's favored from God above the other siblings. So that's what I put. And for the last part, we're going to read verses 28 through 31. Um, I didn't make an extra note for that one on my updating one, but I did make a note for it on my October one. But so we're just going to read that and then that's where we're good. And then we're going to finish in this. Is, so 28 through 31 reads as follows. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Roll, wait, roll over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over other every other living creature that moves on the, along the ground. I can't read. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to, the, to all the beasts of the earth, of all the birds in the sky, and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every plant for food, and it was so. God saw that it was good. Wait, God saw that he was made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. So the seven days on the second chapter. I thought, I thought it was all seven days in the first one, but we learned today the seventh day, the final rest day, whatever is in chapter two. So we get into that in the next one. Um, yeah, it's 12 o'clock. I gotta leave in an hour. So I won't be editing no video today. <laughs> but, anyways, so what I put in my notes for October, I said, God bless them. Aren't them writing, wait, aren't we them writing the Bible or is this Moses identifying himself as not one of us, the chosen? Because didn't Moses write the New Testament? Um, but he blessed, but he, it's funny to see my mindset then, my mindset now. But anyways, so, but he blessed us how? If he made mankind, he blessed us how? That speaks of like a spiritual gift or something, right? Um, this will speak of that he gave us gifts. Why give us gifts that we're not supposed to use? It's like, um, <laughs> he told us to increase in number and populate, which is populate, uh, fill the earth, gardening, and subdue it, which means to control it. Control the earth. Not people, not just physically, spiritually, mentally, all of that. Think, again, look at what's happening in the industry right now. All the spiritual reality stuff is controlling the earth. You think Beyonce is just Beyonce because she can sing and dance? No, no. She does all this other demonic stuff with her. And all the people who are in her beehive are being controlled by her. She's controlling parts of the earth. This is what the industry is for. Woo, y'all gotta keep up. All right, anyways. If we can control the earth, we can control the ground, the trees, the clouds, the clouds of the weather, etc. 
that's why we can get recharged from the earth because we're commanding the earth to recharge us when we put our feet onto the ground we control the weather god oh my gosh i was just looking at the chosen guest it's funny how days add up I've, this is why i know nothing is on um, nothing is for accident the reason why i only finished this part is for a reason because there's stuff that's just bit resonating with the chosen right now and then in the chosen in the bible because the, the chosen space off the bible but i was just watching the part yesterday because it was the last episode of the third season um and it was the it was the episode where or the time where jesus was um he told the disciples to go out to the ocean and that's when peter walked on the water and he's like oh you got a little faith and he had to pull it up from the water and all of that um but anyway so after he got back in the boat with the disciples he commanded the storm that was going on to to be at peace to stop he commanded the weather we have the power to command the weather if jesus can do it we can do it the only difference between you and i and jesus is the amount of faith he had in god jesus was a human being i don't believe jesus was god i believe jesus is a powerful divinity person how he came about if he was born through god i don't know i don't care so do i believe he's got himself no stuff like that is why i believe people are really missing the biggest purpose of jesus you want to worship jesus but jesus is not the most high jesus was connected what the most connected being to the most the most connected person to the most high and that's why he is the most special he is the true way the way and the truth of the life in the life of the world of us he commanded the skies to be at peace and they stopped. And he was a regular human being person. It wasn't an Arisha that, that helped him, as far as you know. It, it was God. He held that power. Imagine how the power not to just be like changed the weather. I'm. I got, I got to finish before this space wears up. But anyway, it's funny how I was just watching The Chosen in that part yesterday. Oh, my gosh. The sides is up. You guys, I got to end this part here. Um, I don't think there's anything. He was satisfied with everything and the fruits and all of that. So what the rest of the notes said. But thank you guys for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe um, to join the family and keep up with me. All you have to do is press the subscribe button. After you press the subscribe button, you press the notification bell to get notified every time I post a video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love you guys. I'm so glad I'm, I'm good. I can post this finally. Amen. Goodbye. <laughs> Let's say I will have the rest of the video posted. The Genesis 2 posted this week on Sunday. Hopefully. Love you guys. Bye.